is kind of what we try to live by at Camp Deerhorn. It's something that we try to take home with us and we try to become better people with it. So it goes, to enjoy the great outdoors is one of the gifts of life. To greet the dawn with a smile and the mess call with a laugh. To spread sunshine and good cheer just for the fun of it. To play every game on the level, win modestly, lose gracefully, and have a kind word for the opposing side. To speak the truth and to think the truth. To cooperate with other campers and find pleasure in lending a helping hand. To try to see the other fellow's side of the question and to strive for harmony. To be kind because manliness requires kindness. To be strong because self-reliance is born of strength. To be careful because recklessness is the admission of unwise judgment. To be too generous to bear a grudge and too good natured to pick flaws in others. To aim for self-improvement. To be a regular fellow, a pal to other campers, a friend in manner and deed, a booster rather than a knocker, an optimist rather than a pessimist, pessimist, and a gentleman under all conditions and circumstances. <coughs> That's a lot of words. So I'm going to focus on one. And the one I'm focusing on is to enjoy the great outdoors as one of the gifts of life. I'm going to kind of tie that in with the theme that one small change that you can make can make one large change. One small thing that you guys do today could cause a huge change tomorrow. We have the capacity to make so much difference in this world, every single one of us. And I wanna make sure that you guys know that. So I want to talk about two different things. I wanna talk about this book, it's called Saving Civility. I got this when I was in college about 10 years ago. It talks about all the ways that you can become a better person. And I'm just gonna read just one little part of it. And then I'm gonna talk about a story of Yellowstone National Park. So this chapter is called Plant the Seed. In the movie, It's a Wonderful Life, the protagonist, George Bailey, has an opportunity with a little help from an angel to see what the world would be like that he had not lived. He comes to discover how his life has made a difference in the lives of others. Unlike George Bailey, we do not have that gift of this vision. Nonetheless, we can create our path through our best positive intentions and actions. There is no roadmap in life. No single act defines us. Few of us will become great leaders or inventors, discover cures for diseases, or otherwise alter the scope and destiny of mankind. However, when we raise our children with compassion, they're kind to strangers, offer a sympathetic ear, extend a helping hand, and do the right thing. <coughs> these contributions of which we are all capable of these are actions that, are, that directly affect the lives of others around us and make a difference, whether in a large or small way. These are seeds that we can each plant. Raise your hand if you guys have ever heard of the story of how the wolves changed Yellowstone when they were reintroduced. Awesome. I'm really glad that not a lot of you guys have heard this story because I find this really, really cool. When I was a teacher, this was a TED talk that we had to listen to. And it talks about how one small change caused so many other changes. So in 1995, which is before I think every single one of you guys were born, in 1995, the wolves were reintroduced into Yellowstone. But before that, there were 70 years in Yellowstone without any wolves in that park. Raise your hand if you guys have ever been to Yellowstone National Park. Raise your hand if you think Yellowstone National Park is really pretty. So. I'm gonna tell you guys why it looks the way it looks now. So 70 years without wolves in that area. The reason why they weren't there was because they were overhunted. Wolves are predators, so they were taking out a lot of the livestock in the area. So a lot of people hunted them. And then there were no wolves in Yellowstone National Park. Because the wolves were gone, the elk increased in population, which resulted in them overgrazing. The coyotes increased in population and became the dominant predator which made a lot less rodents and a lot less small game, which then took out the foxes, the eagles, and the hawks. The elk killed the aspen trees because they didn't have enough grass to graze. That overgrazing contributed to the disappearance of the beaver who needed that aspen tree to live. Overgrazing caused erosion in the soil, which completely changed the landscape. But, 
after lots and lots and lots of years of us fighting to try to reintroduce the wolf, we finally did. In 1995, 14 wolves were reintroduced to Yellowstone National Park. And then in 1996, another 17 were. After the wolves returned, the water flow changed. Just because wolves were reintroduced into that area, the way that the river ran through Yellowstone National Park changed. And I'm gonna tell you guys why. When the wolves came back, deer and elk population went down and it changed their behaviors. When those type of um, deer and elk are threatened by wolves, they don't graze as much, which allowed the grass to grow back and the soil to stay where it was. The grass valleys regrew and the trees grew six times higher than what they were originally. Birds and the bears came back. New bigger trees provided a home for the songbirds that came through trees grew and allowed the bears to eat the berries off of them. A healthier bear population decreased the elk population. Then the beavers were allowed to flourish because the trees came back. When the beavers created their dams, the muskrats, the amphibians, the ducks, the fish, the reptiles, the otters all had a home again. Mammals, wolves decreased, Oh, sorry, wolves decreased the coyote population, so the coyotes are no longer the dominant predator, which increased the mice and the rabbits, which then brought back the hawks, the weasels, the foxes, and the badgers. And last but not least, the land changed. Because of all of that change, soil erosion slowed down and allowed riverbanks to establish, which resulted in the change of the flow of the river. Just because that one tiny little change happened, just because they reintroduced wolves into the Yellowstone National Park, everything changed. Absolutely everything. And I want you guys to remember that one small change that you all make can cause great things in the future. So things that you guys can do that can change the world by doing just something super small, you can start up by picking up garbage. So when I walked over here in this fire ring, there was this smushed bug spray can. So I went and picked it up because like Spencer said this morning, the beautification of Camp Beerhorn makes everything healthier around here. You can run for your student council. So in your guys' school, if there's something that needs to change, you guys can be proactive and run for student council. You guys can volunteer in your neighborhood. So if you guys see something in your neighborhood, you're like, I don't like this. I feel like this should be better. Every single one of you guys can do something about it. And I asked Matt, is it Stamp, Stimson, Stampson? Thank you, I just wanted to pronounce that correctly. I asked him earlier and I go, if you could do one small thing that would change something larger in the future, what would you do? He said, smile. If you see somebody that's having a hard day, or if you see somebody that's alone or struggling, just one smile or just one hello or just one how are you can change the projection of how those people are how they feel, how they will behave in the future. So please remember that every single one of you guys has the capacity of absolute greatness. And I'm gonna wrap up with just one more small quote and then I'm gonna let CJ play a song for you. But know your value and recognize that you are a unique human being capable of making a difference in this world. Be bold and courageous in your journey taking small steps that enable you to climb mountains, traverse valleys, and also chart a path for others. Make sure that you guys are working on yourselves every single day and this world will become a way better place. All right, let's let CJ play a song to wrap us up.